What's up, Sushi Squad? We are back in more Troll and today we're gonna be doing the Sunfest event guide video. I don't even know why it's showing this, but that's just because there's a bunch of limited time packs. Uh, I will end up tackling these packs in a separate video, but for today's purposes, we're just going to end up talking about the event, which is actually a really, really funny one. Not to be confused with saying fun, I didn't say it was fun, okay? This one involves a lot of mining, but first and foremost, you're going to have to meet Chuck Pinzo. So when you end up coming to the hub, there's going to end up being an NPC chilling right here, which actually looks hilarious. This is what the guy looks like, and I love him, dude. Seriously, I, I wish that this was a costume that we would end up getting in the game, or frankly speaking, a class that would look like him. He looks like a Roblox character. He's so stupid and so hilarious uh and his whole quest line actually involves like cryptocurrency and we're literally going to be mining for it but anyways it's just hilarious uh so for completing that part of the quest of just meeting him and interacting with him you'll get a pin zoin which is a, a pin yada coin whatever uh and then they want you to craft the chuck pinzo mining banner so in order to end up crafting this banner you're going to have to go to each of the pinata houses which is going to be this guy here uh and then there's an rnpc there and an rnpc here uh each of them having their own respective shops right uh but most of all you're going to end up needing a license from every single one of these guys which is going to end up costing you fifteen thousand flux and you'll use that uh, in order to craft this banner right here, which will end up costing all of the licenses as well as a pin zoin and some extra additional flux. Uh, so by completing that, you'll end up getting more pin zoins, of course. Uh, and then the next part of the quest wants you to find pin zoins. So while you have this banner equipped, which I love this banner, I wish we got to keep it just because it looks so stupid. I just it's just great, dude, especially these big ones. I wish we could throw them in our clubs vote for chuck um so you basically have to have this equip uh and then it actually has some pretty decent stats it's got 200 light 100 superstition which is a joke stat that doesn't do anything 100 laser mancy and five percent experience gain so we're going to at the very least get one weekend uh, maybe we'll get two but we will end up getting one saturday at the very minimum Okay, so I, I'd recommend that if there's any time that you end up hopping on, just equip the banner uh, and then use your double XP pot and stuff and you'll end up getting 25% uh, bonus XP, I think, instead of just 20%. It's, it's pretty significant. It's pretty cool uh, that this actually has that as a substat. But anyways, it says you may sometimes find pin zones after defeating foes or while mining in Trove. Now, unfortunately, it is way more effective to mine to get the resource rather than just fighting enemies. Now, if you absolutely don't care about getting everything all at once, you could just casually go out and just farm dungeons and stuff, just carry on with your usual business. And then you could just end up casually getting this event finished by the 25th, you know, whatever. Um, or you could end up going out of your way to mine. Now you can end up going into the novice world and farming shapestone, or you can go to the radiant ruins world, which has tons of the sky ore, uh, and you can either blast these away, uh, find somebody else that's blasting them away. If you have big bombs, okay, cool. But granted, the average player that doesn't actually have bombs, bombs are very, very expensive right now. And I'll get you, I'll let you in on a little quick tip here. You can actually buy the materials to craft bombs and then you can craft bombs and you can sell them for a profit because people are so desperate to get the bombs to get through this event. Now that said, it's no guarantee that you'll end up turning a profit because as this event goes on in the days, it's going to end up becoming a lot cheaper and a lot more affordable because people like me who already have everything out of it, well, I don't have everything out of it, but I've got the stuff that I cared about, which is namely this disgusting ally. Like, look at him, he's so cursed. Anyways, so... When you're mining ore, or even when you're fighting enemies, it's not a guaranteed chance. It is a percentage chance of dropping a pinzoin, and it wants you to get 50 of them for this part of the quest, and then you'll end up getting five more pinzoins as a reward. Uh, and then the next part of the quest wants you to print a Trovian finite note. Now, this kind of sucks because if you look at this, the Trovian uh, finite note takes pinzoins so you would have uh naturally gotten 50 because of the quest line and then you spend 500 flux uh and then you end up crafting one of these finite notes which 
it kind of sucks because basically the event kind of adds extra steps that it doesn't need to because this right here is basically going to end up being the event currency that you're using in all of the event shops and to craft all of the event stuff. So there's a quite a bit of unnecessary steps in order to get these tokens versus other events where you would normally just get the the token from just fighting enemies or whatever but anyways you end up printing the finite note and then you'll end up gaining five more pinzoins as a reward basically all the rewards you get as pinzoins then it wants you to purchase anything from a quartermaster which uh, again is going to end up being these idiots right here so you can end up using the pinzoin or the finite coin note sorry uh to grab a panate token for example uh but anyways he just wants you to end up buying anything out of this guy's shop which, yeah, uh, you can buy it out of any of the pinata guys' shops, frankly speaking. Like, there's all three of them. So, if you thought this guy's stuff was expensive, don't worry. There's stuff just as expensive in each of these shops. So, yeah. But anyways, you end up purchasing something from a quartermaster. You'll end up completing that part of the quest, which ends up giving you five more pinzoin. And then it wants you to find 250 more pinzoins. So this is why so many people were just going into the Radiant Runes. Uh, I, I did a stream of it uh, last night, which I'll probably have that stream go up either later today or tomorrow. We'll see. It depends. Um, but basically, uh, you could end up getting a huge group of people just bombing and blasting everything. So you don't always have to end up spending all of your bombs. You, you could end up just leeching off of other people, which is cool. Shark Troven's telling me you got a Permatorch. Congrats, man. Uh, but anyways, you got to get 250 Pinzoins. I cannot stress enough that the Pinzoins themselves are a chance of dropping. So it's... It's not as simple as just farming 250 ore. You're gonna be at this for a while. Uh, and then you'll end up gaining more pinzoins. And then the next part of the quest wants you to meet Cubesley in the hub. So you come back to the hub and suddenly Cubesley's here instead of Chuck because Chuck is a scammer who stole all your money and he left. Uh, and then you talk to him and you get pinzoins again. I don't know why uh, Cubesley is giving us the uh, garbage currency, but hey, whatever. And then the next part of the quest is to meet the Corazian representative. So you're going to notice that even though there's all of these NPCs in these buildings, there's also these three idiots out here in the front. And uh, this is the one that you're going to end up talking to. Uh, you just got to end up interacting with him. Uh, and then it'll give you a Trovian finite note. And then the next part of the quest line is to defeat Chuck Pinzo. Yeah, so he is actually an enemy. Uh, you'll notice, however, that it is related to the Delves. Yes, that's right. You can uh, craft a Delve portal. Uh, I'll put footage in of what his Delve actually looks like. The annoying thing is that you have to craft the Delve portal. You go into the Delve, uh, and Chuck is going to end up being on the third floor that you end up going to. So he essentially is going to end up replacing the boss that would normally be there for the Shadow Chest. So just keep that in mind. You can get the memento very rarely off of him. So I don't know why anyone would ever want to end up crafting it, uh, especially when it's this expensive. But he's pretty funny that he's an enemy. So you complete that quest line and you get an Trovian finite note. Uh, and then the next part of the quest is really, really cursed, where it wants you to meet Chuck Pinzo as an invader. So it doesn't explain this very well, but there's something that you might not know about Trove, which is that when you're in Adventure Worlds and you know when the sky turns all dark and then these dudes come down and they start fighting you, those are actually invaders. They're going to end up being enemies that have been in the game since I started playing years and years and years ago. And uh, they're on an eight minute timer, usually. It might have changed, but the last time I timed it, it was about eight minutes before they end up spawning. And they'll end up having one invader spawn per person that's nearby. And so Pinzo or Chuck is basically going to replace invaders during the portion of this event. So it's really funny to see him come down uh, and then he starts following you around and stuff. Because even though he comes down as a friendly NPC, he still has the AI of an angry uh, enemy. And so he'll actually lock on to someone and start following them around. Which I, I, I really shouldn't be talking about this in a video because I know that it's going to end up leading to some people trolling. But unfortunately, uh, devs don't have it set up in a very smart way. The invader uh, Chuck is actually going to end up following somebody at random. So it just picks somebody to end up chasing. Uh, and you can end up 
interacting with him and having a shop show up. So this is what the shop items are going to end up being. But if the Chuck invader is aggroing someone else and they lead him away, you won't be able to interact with the shop. So it's just kind of annoying um, that it does that for some reason. But frankly speaking, it doesn't matter because I mean, look at these shop items. They suck. Like, why would you ever want them? Uh, and then anyways, you just got to meet him. You don't got to buy anything. And then you'll get an Aerotrovian finite note. Uh, and then the last part of the quest line is to meet the Karazian uh, representative again. So you can just go talk to Carrie here and you'll end up getting 15K flux. So you kind of got your flux back. You spent more than 15K though. So, okay, whatever. And then last but not least, there's going to end up being a special quest line, uh, which is to find Chuck Pinzo. So this is going to end up being a special optional uh, part of the event that I don't think anybody's going to know how to do that outside of old school players like myself because you have to find him in the old school hub. So how do you get to the old school hub? There's another video that I have on the channel which shows how you end up getting the porta potty mount, which is a toilet mount. I'm not even joking. And that actually is the first place that we ended up discovering where the old hub was. So for those of you that are just, you know, don't want to end up scouring through older videos and stuff like that, basically you're going to be traveling to the west and you can do this even on console. If you type slash debug text, uh, that will end up having all of these numbers show up in the top left. So it's going to show your frame rate and so on and so forth. But most of all, you're looking at the location right here. So you're going to end up heading to the west, to the west, to the west. Eventually, you will come across um, a different colored sea, which is going to be a sea of regret. And in the sea of regret, you can't build blocks, which means Gonda is actually useless. You won't be able to use it out there. So hopefully you have enough jump to survive out there because the sea of regret is also going to damage you. So essentially you'll fall into the ocean and you got to get high enough in the air that you can glide so that you don't end up taking damage. And essentially you're going to end up going out and out and out and out and out straight to the west make sure you don't waver because if you do it can be very difficult to end up getting back on course and you're going to end up going to minus 2600 2600 or 2700 something like that uh, and that is going to end up being where you will find this portal that will then end up leading you to the old school hub so this is the hub from before I was even playing Trove, uh, I'm pretty sure, or maybe maybe it was around the time I was playing Trove, but this is going to end up being the old hub, uh, and essentially you're going to end up having to find uh, Chuck just chilling out here, uh, and when you do, you can end up interacting with him, uh, and nothing really ends up happening. But you might want to end up exploring while you're here. There's a couple little Easter eggs and stuff. Uh, there's going to end up being a house that will have a crafting table that allows you to craft the porta potty mount, which is going to end up looking like, uh, if I can end up getting it for you guys right here, it's just going to end up being this right here. So this is super duper old school. I don't know why Trove was obsessed with toilets back in the day. They even teased that they would make a golden one for mastery for a golden throne, which thank God they never did that because I don't really care about toilet humor. I'll just let that joke sink in. Um, but yeah, that's how you end up getting the final part of the quest. And that is going to end up giving you this little ally right here which he's kind of cute. He's kind of stupid. I, you know, he's carrying a sign for Chuck. So I, I kind of like the fact that he's a little cute pinata guy. Uh, I don't feel that they should have given mastery to this, especially considering it's optional. I also don't know why they're acting like it's tradable. I guess it was tradable. Honestly speaking, I would have rather traded it, but anyways, um, a better look that you can get at the ally is it's actually just this NPC right here. So he's actually just a bigger version of the dude, right? But, uh, moving on to the last portion of the event, you'll notice that we can end up getting the Pinzo pop-up. This is going to end up being the ally that I've got right here, which just looks disgusting. I love it. Uh, and then there's going to end up being Pinzo's puppy. What For whatever reason, that's going to end up being an ally. There's also going to end up being a bunch of recipes that you can unlock during the event as well. Uh, and then there's going to end up being Pinzo's premium packing crate, which randomly contains one of four tradable truck Chuck Pinzo collectibles. So it'll end up containing the pop-up, the puppy, uh, and rarely a Pinzo's Patsy or Pinzo's Pachyderm. I don't even know what those are, but whatever is tradable versions and it costs a hundred of these finite tickets so combine that 
with the fact that you can end up donating these and it wants you to donate a lot of them. But there's also going to end up being all these recipes, which I assume, you know what, let's get one of them. I assume that these recipes are probably going to end up taking these stupid Pinzo coins as well. Yeah, of course they are. And a lot of them too. It should cost one each, whatever devs, you're crazy. Uh, but then on top of all of that, again, there's going to end up being the TFNs used for, there's a bouncing mount in each of the pinata houses. There's also going to end up being these rare boxes, which can end up giving you some of the craftable items. So it can end up giving you these tradable versions of them, which is actually pretty nice. But again, you got to consider that there is one in this table right here. There's also going to end up being one over in this table, which thankfully these don't seem to be nearly as expensive as that other one. Oh God, never mind. I take it back. Um, but the point is that overall, I think you need somewhere around like, uh, well, you need like over 3000 of the, uh, uh, of the pinzoids, uh, in order to end up crafting enough finite notes. Even then, it's probably like 5,000 or something like that. And again, considering the fact that it's not a guaranteed drop, it's very, very random. So anyways, I, I don't know whether or not I'm going to end up getting everything out of all these crafting tables and junk. I mean, I guess I'll get this just because I happen to have the items because thankfully this doesn't cost any of the pinata coins. I think that the devs made a bit of a mistake on that one. Uh, oh, that was just a random box. Okay, well, that's not a big deal then. But... I mean, overall, you know, it's a cool enough event. Uh, I don't like the fact that we had to grind so much ore out of it, but I mean, at least you get some cool stuff out of it. Like this is pretty neat for a weird platypus demon thing. Uh, and then again, we also have all of these packs, which I'll end up reviewing in a different video. Funny enough, these packs actually have some of the coolest costumes in the game. This crab guy right here is literally a Revenant costume. But anyways, I'm getting off topic here. I just wanted to end up having a quick video for you guys that ended up taking a little bit longer to explain some of the later halves of this event. But I did want to end up uh, putting some of this stuff into perspective for you guys. Anyways, smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want, support the channel, and have a wonderful day, everybody.